the title of the, today's forum is called um, Najib's 100 Days, What Went Wrong. Some may say that it's a bit too early to make an assessment, especially so for someone who has taken up the office of the Prime Minister. It is no easy task. We are all aware of that. But nevertheless, we don't want to be a case of it's too late. And um, today, in fact, it is already past 100 days. It's already 115 days. Now he marks his 100 days on 14th of July. He took office on the 3rd of April 2009. 50 days, or roughly about 50 days, into his office, into his premiership, Najib announced somewhat an interesting, but at the same time, a hollow sounding concept. The concept what we call One Malaysia, that has been mocked many times, and uh, been ridiculed and said to be uh, One Black Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a piece of the good news. I'm not the one who's going to give the speech today. I will start off with one of our strong, uh, strong person, to be politically correct, strong person from the Slango State. Um, she has reached uh, a celebrity status as an assembly person, um, for better or worse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you to Thank you very much, uh, Latifa. Our distinguished speakers, friends, Selamat Malam, Tatia Hao. Wonderful. Good evening to everyone. Thank you very much, Latifa, for making me speak first. Apparently, this is what they do to juniors. Uh, if you look at the uh, our very distinguished panel of speakers. I'm actually a newbie. I'm uh, one of the so-called new persons. Still technically can qualify to be Putri in the end, but at least in, uh, in Kadilan I can't. They just uh, change the age group. So this is what they do to torture uh, young people in Kadilan. Nonetheless, I shall try my best. And let torture. My dear friends, in fact, what I want to do is not to start by saying what had gone wrong in the first 100 days. Because it is the same government that, has, that we have had, not just in 2008, but going back to 2004, Going back to 1999, 1995, 1990, and beyond. This is the same old government. And let us not forget that. It doesn't matter who we have as the front person, whether for the past 22 years or so, it was then Dr. Mahathir, and then, in 2004, we had a new fresh face, someone named Abdullah Badawi. And yet again, later, this year, 2009, we have Dr. Najib. It's the same government, doing the same thing, having the same policies. You tell me what has changed. This is the same government who arrested Masabu, the same government who arrested Tian Chua, Lim Kit Siang, Teresa Kok, and there are still dozens of people languishing in Kamunting. There is no change. They tell you they will amend the ISA. 
We will not wait for it. It is nonsense. Only a change in federal government do, will we see any real change. My friends, since Najib came to power, they put out in all the front pages what they plan to do, how they will be amending the Internal Security Act, the ISA. Let me tell you, I have been in the human rights movement for a very long time. I'm trying to remember now, okay. Since 1996. That was when I first came back from abroad because I decided in my then 20s that I had the energy and the time and the luxury to try to make a difference. I joined Swara Rakyat Malaysia, Swara. And from that organization, which started in 1989, we have been campaigning without fail, without even giving an inch that this awful draconian law must be repealed. There must be no amendments. It must be thrown out together with other laws. What are the other laws? Printing Presses Publications Act, Emergency Ordinance, Sedition Act, Police Act. There, has, there are at least 11, 11 federal legislation that curbs our freedom of association, curbs our freedom of expression, of peaceful assembly. Look at what is happening out there. It took my car to come from Charlotte, it took more than two hours. <laughs> this is really, it is as if we are at war. But perhaps we are indeed at war. They have set up at least 11 roadblocks for me to come here and I assume the rest, the rest of the speakers and audience, we had to go through little, little uh, taman lanes. We had to, you know, force ourselves, uh, ourselves through just to get here. What kind of country is this? What kind of government is this that will not allow us to assemble peacefully? This is the scenario that should, in theory, happen in any democratic country. In any democratic country, citizens are allowed to assemble peacefully. We have our marshals. PASS has supplied more than a thousand unit AMA or security people to guard us, to guide us. Other parties have got volunteers to help marshal us. If we are allowed to do what should be rightfully or what should be our right in any democratic part, in, in any democratic country, tomorrow it will be very easy. At two o'clock, we gather, we have a peaceful march, which will take not more than 30 or 40 minutes. We hand over a memorandum. The deal is done by 3 p.m. Do you believe this can happen in our country? Do you believe? No. What they do, they will put out thousands of police officers, FIU trucks, and provocators outside, which will mean that they will try to stop us just to hand a memorandum, of the memorandum which states our objection to this draconian law. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with this country? This is the same government. It doesn't matter whether it's Najib. But then we did it too, during the Bursley rally. That's what they tried to do. But we forced ourselves through, and we succeeded, and we got where we, we were on that day, during the Bursley rally. I'm sure all of you, many of you, also came, or at least supported us from behind. Tomorrow, we will do the same. This is just one of the many, many gatherings that we will be organizing. And this is just ISA. There are also other human rights abuses that we must not forget. 
recently. I think everyone here was very shocked, Every, all of us, we were very shocked when we found the late Teo Big Pok's body lying in Shah Alam, in Plaza Masalam. But he was not the only one. Since 2003, there have been at least 1,805 Malaysians who have died in custody. The custody of the police, custody of prisons, and now custody of the MACC.